Perfect. There you go. We got to work. So, Taylor, uh, how are you today? I am doing well. How are you? I'm doing good as well. Thank you so much. I mean, what better way to have, yeah, an, uh, an epic start of the day with an epic guest as you, right? <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> so, so, before we start, you know, I'll have to give you a proper epic intro. So, I love doing this. I mean, I, I've said a million times that if at some point I have live audience, I'm going to put a play to this, you know, just to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, uh, but anyway, tell me, what's new since our last interview? Um, well, a lot of traveling and auditions and post-production on the Cooper uh, feature. And then I, um, I had to take a couple of weeks of stepping back from doing work to focus on health for a while. But yeah. I want to say the wonders of acupuncture, amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is so it is so interesting that with that that whenever you are, uh, yeah, work something and then you're like kind of pushing yourself a little bit your body instantly at some point tells you either you shut down for a while or or we are going to shut down in a bad way. You know what I mean? It's so interesting. That. That's exactly what happened. It was just like, all of a sudden I hit a wall and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, okay. So, yeah. That's amazing. And how has been like the whole audition process now that everything started to open? I, I've heard that, uh, that self tapes are still there, but now what they will do is that they will Uh, they will so, so so you will have like a self tape and then if they like it then they will have like a second one which it's it's in person right mm -hmm. yeah uh i mean it depends on who you're working with so okay. far uh, within the past couple of months all the callbacks have still been digital at least the ones i've been a part of so yes. it depends on where you are in that company's um rules and stuff like that so yeah i mean that's been interesting um it's been definitely increasing i mean the auditions never stopped but it's like ever since things have started to open up a little bit more mm -hmm. there's a lot more um auditions and stuff like that and then with um it was interesting because when you're not feeling good <laughs> like i was saying during that little two weeks yeah. where I, back, i took a step back from me pushing but it's like still auditioning while you're sick you're kind of like i want to say no But at the same time, it's like, ugh, it could have been better. What if I had been healthier, feeling better, you know? Would it have been that much different? So that's also been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> And like, what are some of the things that you learned during this whole self-tech process? I mean, like, um, yeah, like how do you usually do it? Because uh, for example, I heard that for some actors, they will, uh, yeah, they will spend hours and hours doing just one audition or other ones who would take like a couple of takes here, like three opportunities and if they need any, and the last one, you will send it, you know, like what is your, yeah, like what is the process that you, that, that you took during this, during this whole uh, self-tape process? I try to keep it as real as I can because mm. you're auditioning in person for somebody, you only get maybe two takes. You get like one that's like, you just walk in the room like, hi, how you doing? Okay, let's go. And then they uh, sometimes they'll give you feedback and then you take that feedback and then you do it again. Okay. And that's, so it's like, I try not to, I mean, I've had those days where I just hammer a scene until it's blue in the face, you know, but I try really hard not to. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, because it's like, and when you look back at them, if you're hammering the scene over and over and over again, many people, including myself, when you watch them all back, they're all similar. They just have little slight differences. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so it's really hard to pick one because like they're all so similar, but I like that moment and that one better than that one. So it's just best to try to keep it as limited as possible. That's um, been my experience, but like making sure you're off book too, because that, um. yeah, I mean, just like when you're alive, you don't have your script with you. Um, so that's, That's just me. I like being off book. I know a handful of other people um, like having the script with them, which mm. that's good. And sometimes when you have like a really quick scene, you're by bouncing off each other yeah. and you got the audition like that day and it's due the next morning, that it's like, yeah, you need to have your script. Or it'd be nice to have your script so you're verbatim as opposed mm. to the idea of the scene because you never know which um, 
production company wants you to be word perfect and which one wants you just to get the vibe, you know? Yeah, so. totally. Wow. So cool. And also I think like the whole, yeah, like the fact that we all have to went technologically because of the whole COVID and everything. I mean, and now that you need to uh, use kind of cameras now and send it to email and all of that, I think that it also was kind of like a learning curve, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. I mean, self tapes already existed before COVID, but sure. just volume of self tapes went from like here to here, you know? <laughs> so kind of off the charts, but um, yeah, learning better lighting and stuff, because that really makes a difference. I mean, I've been hearing, I posted about this on my um, Instagram a few days ago, but um, I was told that casting directors, now not all casting directors, some of them do all the painstaking work, but some of them get like hundreds of thousands of submissions. And so a lot of them only look at the thumbnail of what juts out to them sometimes. Sometimes they'll just look at the, mm. this is what I've been told. So I'm not a casting director. <laughs> <We're good. laughs> All casting directors are the same because they're not. Um, but a handful of people that I have spoken with that yeah. either which were casting assistants or, um, you know, they're, they work closely with them type thing. They've been told that not all casting directors look at all the auditions. They'll look at mm -hmm. a thumbnail at them or they'll look at, if you're on Actors Access, they'll pick a headshot that jets out at them. So um, there's one casting director, she was super particular. If in the first two seconds of your audition, yeah. something in the background that was not supposed to be there, like if, um, like I'm in a hotel right now, so I don't have, my background or anything but if i if she saw like a frame just mm -hmm. of it you're done you're not even considered it's okay. like <laughs> she, she would get so many um submissions and stuff and i didn't realize how many um submissions they get i mean one it's a huge deal to have a casting director be like hey i like your headshot and i like the clip that you originally sent me i want to yeah. see so it's like right there they're like you could work but if you give them something that's like, eh, um, then they're like, I have so many other people that could work. It's like you messing up on this one thing. It's like, eh, you know, so totally. trying, yeah, it's like formatting, messing up on formatting. Um, because I mean, I thought I botched auditions and I book it, you know, and I've heard that from tons of people. Um, like you miss a line or something like that. And then they're like, well, they liked your essence. And they liked what they thought you could bring to the character while you book it, but, um, or just your look. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's, that's been interesting. Improving the lighting and like your first thumbnail grab, making sure that all your stuff in the scene is applicable to what you need and whatnot. So yeah, <laughs> sorry, that was well, a lot of That is so cool. Interesting. That is so interesting. Yeah. And you, and you know what? I think it, it also kind of makes sense that, I mean, they, they will receive like a tons of auditions and they will have to check like super quick. And yeah, I would, I, I would assume that like the thumbnail that is, that is more like attractive, you know, it would be like, I want to see it, you know, either from like the typical one. Yeah, I do think it was, yeah, it does make sense. Also. Yeah, I mean, definitely not all cast directors because totally. I know people to even look at. So it's like they definitely get it. But the ones that get thousands, you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> That's amazing. And what advice could you give to those who recently started doing self tapes? Um, well, yeah, being off book, making sure you have like your lighting setup is super affordable mm. and super important. So they can see your yeah. face. I mean, if you have an iPhone, any iPhone, even like one of the older ones, that's still better than nothing. You don't need like a huge setup, like having a ring light that has the little hookup thing. Like Amazon has tons of those. They're so easy and affordable, like very cheap. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, it's amazing. You don't have to buy the whole like $250 studio with the box lights and everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah. yeah I, I, I also bought those lamps, so I know what you mean. <laughs> okay. I was like, this one works better. <laughs> yeah, totally. But, but you know, like one of the things here is that I'm still struggling with my lighting. I mean, even to this day, I'm still like moving, like putting new things like, okay, I'm going to put light here instead of this because in some of them, the, the lighting is cool, 
But in other ones, when I'm when I'm kind of review them to put them on YouTube, I'm like, yeah, I need to I need to do something either with lighting here or stuff like that. So yeah, it is so interesting that you that uh, that the more you get yourself involved into something, you start to pick those little details. You know, that maybe for some people will be like, I don't care about lighting, but you want it so your presentation can look better. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the when people see like a photo or like we did thumbnails. That's your calling card. First thing they see, and it's like, oh, do I want to look at that? You know, type thing. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So on our last, yeah, so on the last interview, we talk about your acting career, which is amazing and bad as we know that. Um, now, and also we we talk about some of your characters. But now, tell me, if you could live in one of your characters' universe, which one you would choose? Well, um. It's not finished yet, but I mean, yeah, I can't talk about it because it's Don't not. Talk about it. I'm like, yeah, talk about it. oh man, that'd be cool. <laughs> Alien Universe too. That one was lots of fun. But at the same time, I don't. I mean, if I was a synthetic, well, what then? I went human. I'd be really cool, but I wouldn't be human. I don't know. There are many pros and cons to the Alien Universe. Right. <laughs> I'm like, right. If I'm in the Alien Universe. It still be scary because they're all coming at you. I don't know. I guess a human on Earth in the alien universe that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. But wasn't it? Oh no, wait. That was Predator. Wait, no, no, no. I was, I was, I was confused. Um. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that makes sense. If you can get the chance to be, yeah, n not to be in harm's way, right? <laughs> right. It's like I. The uh, technological advances, like, because starting from, um, the Prome yeah, Prometheus and Covenant, that's still way in the future from Alien versus Predator, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, I liked, I liked seeing that, like, you know, David's career. Um, gosh, what, what was his name? Utani? No, Wayland. Wayland. Mm -hmm. yeah. His, his house was cool. I was like, I want to live there. That sounds fun. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know what you mean. The fact that living in this kind of universe in which you know that aliens, I mean, like those aliens, yeah, this looks something that if someone would say, hey, do you want to go to, do you want to go to space? I would say, no, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have lots of people, like even now, they're like, do you want to go to space? And I was like, I don't know. I used to not get freaked out about it, but, um, yeah, <laughs> I did this virtual, you know, those virtual pods where they put the glasses on your face. Yeah. So I've only done it once and I'm not down to do it again. Um, <laughs> it was for the movie Grab, no, was it Gravity? No, First Man. Mm. One of the, not a couple years ago, but I'm sitting in it and then I'm looking down and it's just black and I start freaking out. And I'm like, get me out of here because it just felt like nothing. Like I was yeah. just here. So yeah <laughs> yeah it is super it is super scary the other day i was uh i was just uh you know checking on the wormhole of youtube and then i found this video in which well i mean this live in which apparently like the space station they they will go live so you can check them and you know they will go i mean it looked beautiful and it's amazing but then i saw this video in which there was this uh in which yeah there were a couple of astronauts they were doing like kind of a maintenance uh, like outside and I remember that in, in 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 one of the takes, so there is this guy like working on something, and then he kind of turned, and then like you see this huge blackness, and then uh, and then he, he and then he like turned, and then he turns back again to like doing like the thing, and I would be like, that would be creepy, you know, the fact that you turn around and then you see this huge amongst blackness that you don't know, like you don't know what is out there, you know that, like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's scary though. <laughs> though because it's like I believe in infinite possibilities and like there's no limits but then it's like physical like the universe having infinite being you could be sucked away <laughs> for infinity I was like yeah <laughs> but yeah yeah you know what uh, on Halloween uh I don't know why but I ended up watching like uh some do documentaries about like the whole space and black holes and all of that and it basically, yeah, it basically got me, yeah, yeah, I got scared because basically they were telling like at any moment, poof, 
<laughs> yeah. You know, like at any moment, you don't even, like it, like he takes a second and then we're gone. Like humanity, everything's gone, and then it makes you feel like like you yeah, like it makes you feel super yeah, super helpless, you know, because you don't know what is what is like out there but um at the same time it's 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 really amazing and uh, and and beautiful you know like when when you get the chance like to see the space and everything but yeah uh, uh i'm also one of those people that gets afraid that that what is outside you know i mean that what if one like what if one day we see this huge starship coming to earth what are we gonna do you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it's kind of like oh crap that's like i was <laughs> like there's a meteor or something that it's not going to get into our like our vicinity for like 200 something years but i was like a long time ago i was told that we have enough missiles and stuff in order to destroy asteroids from actually having a huge impact on the earth yeah. but they didn't about it and i was like well then where did all that machinery go do we still have that why are you freaking out and then I don't know. I feel like a lot of these things are put in the news just to create panic for no reason. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. A friend of mine was like uh, that. So a friend of mine, he he doesn't care like what is going on. Like if a meteor comes after he dies, because he's like, I'm gonna be already dead, so I don't care, you know. And I was like, What do you mean? And he was like, Yeah, I mean, as long as I'm alive, I don't want nothing bad happening. I mean, once I'm dead, if a meteor comes, I mean, that's bad for other people you know i'm already dead so but it's so yeah it's so amazing i mean that i mean if somebody yeah like the whole space it's really cool i mean you you can get hours and hours and hours and hours of of content to check like uh, what is out there and like planets and uh, like all of that i mean and it's amazing but yeah i mean if i was in space you know and and like looking through the window and then you see nothing there that would be scary you know that would be kind of a you will feel like i want to go down now you know especially <laughs> right now with the whole space flights they're doing you know i know i'm like oh that's cool for you guys yeah i'm not gonna do it no i'm i'm, I'm good here on on earth though it's good <laughs> yeah that's me i think i didn't used to be freaked out about it i had a um underwater accident where i went i had i was given a crash course in scuba diving and oh, yeah? too deep too fast so my ears burst Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so ever since then, I've had like, I, I couldn't go into a pool or anything for like a year. I don't know if you've been to um, Disneyland, but they have this submarine ride, the Nemo ride. Mm -hmm. And you don't go underwater. The whole thing is just like, here's the water and here's the top of the thing. So you're out of the water. But I was freaking out because I felt trapped and in water. And I was like, oh, um, Recently, I've been able to get back in the water again, but it was like that claustrophobic feeling. I had the same feeling doing that um, space uh, CGI thing. I was like, PTSD is real, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it's um, happening. It's happening. Yeah. But ever since then, I've been like, nope, space is not my jam. It's not happening for me. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, a cousin of mine, uh, he yeah, he likes like he likes to do like scuba diving and everything, and everything. And one time, I remember that uh, that with my uncle, everyone they went they went on the water, and I know how to do it, but I was I don't know I don't know why that day I wasn't there, so I was on boat just chilling, you know. And um, so they went down and everything, and then a couple of hours passed, and then everybody everybody just started to like uh, going out. But then with, with my cousin, they actually had to carry him. I was like, what happened? And at first he, and at first he said that he was hearing a mermaid, you know, that he was, yeah, 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 like that, that, that actually he was hearing voices uh, under the water. And I was like, what? But then one of the guys, one of the guys there uh, who was like, I mean, he had like a, you know, like one of those guys on the movies that, is, that has like all of the experience you want, you know, like 40 years of experience, something like that. You know what I mean? So then this guy was like, no, you didn't hear anything. I mean, what ended up happening is that he got a problem he started like to breathe real fast like something happened with the air and with his brain that made them cause hallucinations that was, was that was what's happening basically wow. there is a name for it but i don't i don't remember like what is the what is like the the, uh, the specific name for it but um but yeah he was uh, because of that he started like to hear to hear voices and to and, and like and like literally when you speak to him he will tell you like he was hearing like this woman voice 
telling him like to come here and like uh, and like my uncle and every and, and everybody told me that that they were looking at him and he was just like trying to swim but he was like not doing anything and the air was just going he was like breathing super fast so that's why I had to like carry him out because I don't know what what kind of um yeah I don't know what happened to him but yeah there is like a they they pull him out and uh they yeah he he like started to breathe and start to like regain conscience because at first he was like not there and that was like super creepy because especially the area that they were like doing all this diving it was in this um it was in this area in which they used to do sacrifices so that was like so, so that add up like another creepiness to the to the whole situation you know i don't mess with that no nope. yeah no. <laughs> that's really yeah. interesting that makes me think of like you know they talk about the sirens and stuff luring sailors way back when if it's something with his air yeah like, Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm the same. I mean, I'm the same person that I don't that I do get intrigued by all of those stuff, but I'm not I'm not like uh, one of those in which I'm going to I'm going to go. Like for example, those who go like uh like urban exploring and everything. I mean, it's cool. I love I love that because they they sometimes take like really cool shots, but like going there I wouldn't do it. The reason why is because I'm not afraid. I mean, I, I'm not afraid of of a ghost, but for a person that lives there, you know, and would get like all aggressive because somebody who, who who he doesn't know is invading kind of his kind of his home let's say you know that that scares me the most yeah no that makes a lot of sense there's this app i don't know if I, oh i was told don't be telling people about this app it's crazy oh yeah yeah it's uh, wait is it is it the app in which they will tell you go to this random place and then you will yes. go um what's called called random or is random narica yeah. yeah yeah exactly so i did that i did it a couple of times i did it I'm once <laughs> yeah i did it once and it took us down this country road and had us halfway down this driveway there yeah. was keep out you're not welcomed here um stay away and we couldn't read what half of it was and then as we start going there's a, a farmhouse around the end yeah. of the with, oh get out get out so we turn around um, and then we decide, well, hey, let's go do another one. <laughs> Why? I don't know. It was late. But, um, <laughs> which makes it even worse, doing random stuff late at night. Um, yeah. but we're all trying to think positive vibes because it says based off the, it's, the app says based off the energy that you choose or whatever, it's going to bring things mm -hmm. or bring you to something that's connected in your psyche. So, mm -hmm. um, me and one girl, we were talking about... Um, money and harmony. She was thinking about harmony, and I was like, I want to find buried treasure. So, sure. we're, I was like, if I can, if you can do anything. So we're trying to like vibe really hard about that. And so it takes us out to this middle of this cornfield, and the corner and the cross streets. Once we got out there, where it had us turn, said mm -hmm. harm, prosperity, and we're like, uh -huh. <clears throat> so we're like, okay. So again, we turn around the next day. We went and checked that house the long road that had all those signs that we couldn't yeah. read off. Apparently somebody comes over there and band like it was very specific. There's a person that lives in that area that keeps showing up at this house, vandalizing it. So they have these signs saying no trespassing. You're not welcomed here. I think his name was Hunter. It's like, you're oh. not welcome. go away Hunter. That's what all the signs were saying. So we're like, Oh, that's crazy. And then I decided I didn't delete it, but I decided to try it one more time with my sister in a completely different state mm -hmm. and it now again to the middle of this field and I'm just driving and driving it's like you're almost here you're almost there and then I get there and it's this huge field there's all these trees and, and I park the car I'm like where is it and so I look straight down there and in the middle like way back in the forest there's one tree mm -hmm. has a ribbon tied around it and I was like I'm not gonna See what that is and i was like okay this was fun and then i deleted the app and i haven't done it since i'm um, like it's just weird i've heard yeah. freaky stuff from that app though i'm like <laughs> yeah there are so many yeah there are so many stories about uh from that app about yeah that that actually sometimes they will take them to these really amazing places but most of them they will take you to these really creepy places you know either to this uh yeah 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 i wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't mess with that. I would be like, yeah, I'm cool. I was like, 
I'm done. Curiosity is satiated. Don't need to yeah. do it. Again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, horror movies have taught me enough, so no. Exactly. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> yeah, horror so, movies. So much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like totally. Like, like whenever you are in a situation, if somebody says, yeah, if somebody says, let's split up. No. Don't do that. Let's stick. Let's stick together and just get out the way we came inside. Just get out the other way. You know, it's it's that be, that is one of the reasons why, for example, I I I I I do like, but sometimes it gets me like super stressed, like slashers. You know, like slasher movies and everything. Because, for example, so they finally get so so finally we know who is the killer, right? And then the killer is is going after our our yeah our our star. But then the star is running, and then the star has a gun, and then the star is falling, and continue is falling one and, and, and another one and another time and another. I mean, our star is falling, and then we see the killer going super slowly, and then instead of using the gun, he throws it at him, you know, or like something like that, like something totally opposite, or like he has it like in in front of him, and he's just like shooting, but magically no bullets hit him, you know, or 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 like he finally goes, yeah, like they finally go to the car. And then they drop the keys. Yeah. And then you're like, I wonder, like, how many? I mean, it's so interesting that that in, in those movies, for like the keychain, they have like 50 keys, and you're like, who has like 50 keys on it? I mean, for your car, I mean, you only need you, you only need like probably two, you know, like the car and for your house one, and that's it. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, they will have like this crazy keychain with millions of keys, and then they're like constantly dropping it, and I'm like, you're not kidding. So like with those movies, I get I get stressed because I'm like, what is going on here? You know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I now go in with the expectation everybody's gonna make. Like, I don't watch that many horror movies because mm. you know, I was like, boy, that's dark, and they'll be dreaming about it, and I don't need that. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, but it's like I go in with the expectation people are gonna make dumb mistakes. <laughs> would I survive this movie? That's that's how it is. That's the game I play now. I'm like, would I survive this movie? <laughs> um, one thing that they do all the time is when they see something scary, they stand there and like it's like what are you doing move you have time yeah. you can't outrun michael myers it's like he doesn't move very fast that's the thing i was like what yeah i recently got freaked out i was late at night i was watching gremlins with my husband and he was like hey can you go get this from the garage and i was like okay um and there's this <laughs> window out by the yeah. garage, like you know whatever so i was like oh okay and then, so I see out of the corner of my eye that there is a man outside. What? I know. So I okay. see man, like, I don't, I don't see their face. I'm like, I am not giving this enough time to see who it is. So I screamed and ran back inside. Mm. While I, I did not stop scream and run back inside. But I was like, ah, you know, back in the house. Like, I was terrified. I was like, there is somebody outside. I've never had this happen before in my life. Turns out it was my husband, um, but <laughs> I'm freaking out, and I was like, yeah. And I, once, as soon as I get inside, I realize it was him because he wasn't there in the room that I just left. Yeah. I, I cried, but after that, I was like, I would survive these movies because I run and scream. I don't stand there and wait for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you. <laughs> so. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I do have one of the, one of those encounters. I think it was like four or five years ago you know, like five six years ago so i was with a couple of friends and then we were uh, so like every friday we uh we we played soccer right like uh with uh yeah with like like the old high school team you know so we were playing so this friday we stayed there on the field like talking drinking beers you know chatting and then it went really dark like like around probably i don't know like it, it, like 10 11 p.m anyway so then we are returning home and then like this like uh like one of my friends was the one that he was driving because like my house it was so funny because my friend will, will like pick us up and then he will start like delivering everybody like one by one you know because like my house was first and then another one another one another one and then his house was the last one so you know, he was like you know but anyway um so on the way back we are we are like going to the through the street and then my friend took like this shortcut and then he took this shortcut and it was like a black shortcut. I mean, like no lights. It was super dark, uh, like nothing. And it was kind of a little bit uh, old road, you know, so and, and pretty bump, 
bumpy. Anyway, so he was like super slow in it, and then and then he finally managed to kind of uh, to kind of go out of it. And then there was like this another, yeah, this road which is super dark, which it was kind of funny because I was like we're in the middle of the city and we find like this kind of road. But anyway, so uh, so we get to this road and then out of nowhere, like literally out of nowhere, this lady, kind of old lady, jumps to the hood of the car like clearly jumps on it and then and then my friend stopped and then the lady uh he he looked at us and he was having kind of this weird face you know like when somebody's drunk you know or 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 super high that they don't really see you you know that that they like that like their face is yeah like like they're in uh in totally other planet you know what i mean and this person yeah so this lady started like to kind of scream but we didn't, but we, we couldn't understand anything she was saying. Right? But she was like screaming and making uh, like moving with her hands. And I was like, "What's going on?" And then a friend of mine, and then a friend of mine was like, "Hey, uh, what's going on? Is there is there anything we can do for you?" And then this lady was like, "Yeah." Uh, then she started talking, and then she was like, "There is this there is this couple of guys who uh, who enter my house, and uh, and 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 I need help because I want those because I I want you guys to help me to take like to 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 take those guys out." And I was like, why don't you call the police? I mean, that was like my first reaction. Like, why did, why don't you call the police? Yeah, but the police, they, they don't answer. And I was like, yeah, um, no, we're not gonna do that. And then, and then, and then like, uh, like this lady was like, no, but like clearly uh, help me out. And then my friend looked at me and I was like, you step on it, like, let's go right now. I mean, this is, this smells super fishy, you know, this smells like a trap, let's go, let's go. So, um, so the so so the lady he uh uh yes so we went away and then of course the lady like like uh, throw rocks at us and anything and then we went away we we went to my house we started talking like I mean that was another reason we we started to drink again like okay let's drink again now you know I mean we have like a fun experience now so we started to kind of uh, like to talk like to yeah like to chat about it like to see what happened there and then what we ended up discovering a couple of days later is that actually in that place they would uh, assault people and they were like okay so we were like super cool because because i mean what they would do is that uh and, and i think that it actually it 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 came to the, it came on the news later on that there was this gang in which they were like put on the street and this lady would come asking for help and then of course somebody would say like i will help you and then once they're inside boom they will take you or like all of your possessions cell phone money and then they will uh, throw you away and i was like okay we were lucky enough that's terrible yeah well, good, good for you guys. <laughs> yeah, totally creepy, though. Totally creepy. But, uh, but yeah, it is, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, that was basically because I saw a horror movie. I was like, mm, this smells like a horror movie scene. Something's going on here. No, let's go. Let's go. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, totally. sorry. Yeah. Totally. Um, but anyway, going back, we went away for, for, for a while here. Tell me, like, what is the key to make a character a relatable one? And also what is your goal for every performance i mean like what do you try to achieve for every character that that you have i mean what do you want the audience um to uh yeah what do you want the audience to feel or to or to see about your character um well i think as far as relatability goes i mean rel relatability is pretty subjective you know because it's like you have somebody that's been through the ringer and it's like somebody who's just got out of high school that it's like was shocked yeah. their whole life they um so i when i'm pl if playing a certain type of character trying to see i don't know because it, it is all extremely subjective it's subjective mm. for every character every situation is subjective but um like to your own personal experience so my goal but my guess for every performance is to make people uh feel <laughs> as would be the easiest answer but it's also like the true answer too it's like whatever um like mm. when i was younger i was really inspired by it. I, I watched a lot of black and white movies and shirley temple was like okay. a kid so i was like um, when I watched a child star, the movie, the story, her life story in movie form, that that's really what really inspired me. I, I like that's what I pinpoint this moment in the video where they're like, uh, 
when you get on that stage, you make people forget all their problems. You make people smile, you know? And so I was like, oh, wow, that's really nice and altruistic. I want to do that, you know, as a kid. Yeah. Um, so like as an adult, um, it, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, I want to, like when I go to a movie, I want to feel things, you know, whether I want to or whatever. So I want to be able to do that for other people. So I guess trying to be as realistic and yeah. I guess like I'm always striving to be the best that I can be and like Benedict Cumberbatch said it will never happen you will never be enough for yourself I was like great <laughs> so, <laughs> like constant strive for yeah. betterment it's like you could always have done better <laughs> it's like okay but in that moment it's like my goal is <laughs> if i don't feel good about a scene it's like but i didn't know i couldn't do anything else like they say this is great keep on going it's like well i did the best i could in my current circumstance and that's all i can do you know yeah. so yeah <laughs> <laughs> and if you could describe your, i mean if you could describe your career at the moment but on a drink or a meal which one you would choose Let's go for both. A drink and a meal. Drink and a meal. Oh. I guess sweet and sour chicken. And... Sparkling water. Okay. This is off the top of my head. I do not. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'd say, I guess I say sweet and sour because I mostly play nice kids or moody kids mm. in sweet situations or bad situations. Oh, yeah. But sparkling water is kind of like, I'm, <laughs> I guess I'm excited about it. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Or I could say a fine wine because it's getting better with every year. There you go. That's the way. That's that's what I'm talking about. Totally yeah. fine wine. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. And like, what would you say? It's one of the reasons why somebody will will walk out of the dreams. Instant gratification. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of like. Uh, some people keep calling us the microwave culture. It's like you see it online, you order it online, it comes to you two days, you know? It's like, happens like that. And, yeah. um, like, if you've been grinding and stuff like that for so long, it's like, even though you've been having all the encouragements and everything like that, um, I think a lot of people give up if they're not getting X result by, like, they put time limits on themselves, which, I mean, in some cases, that's good. It's like, if you're doing something that's unhealthy, Yeah. Don't be too long, but I mean, if nothing, absolutely nothing. I'm not talking about you book a little, like you book a commercial or a walk-on role or something like that. That's not nothing. That's still mm -hmm. meeting people and you're adding stuff to your resume. Um, a lot of people view not getting a Marvel movie as I've done nothing. It's like, well, I mean, that's not true. <laughs> it's like you're still if you're getting enough encouragement on a regular basis to keep pursuing what you're doing, keep doing it. But if you're, if you are constantly trying and submitting and everything like that, and then um, you get nothing, then that, I mean, that's one of those things where it's kind of like, uh, okay, well, I understand, but yeah. um, there might be better opportunities, but some people just need to take a break. Like John Favreau, Favreau, Favreau took a break to pursue culinary and now he says it's helped made his career more fuller you know and it's like everybody knows who John Favreau is and it's like he's directed some huge blockbusters he's in several Marvel movies you know mm -hmm. so that's sometimes you got to take a break to focus on yourself and maybe it's not like it's not not never it's just maybe not right now like you know Alan Rickman started way late in his career as yeah. if all these other um older do they have anything of them being young it's like no because they didn't start till they were later or maybe they didn't book anything till later in life and that's that's okay nobody's life path looks the same okay. but 
I think the biggest uh, reason why a lot of people quit is because of the whole instant gratification thing. Like, cause it's, you're a gig worker and it's, I mean, it can be really hard because if you, cause well, one, you do all this work, like 11 page audition for something, mm -hmm. then you don't hear back from it. But that 11 page audition, you spent two days memorizing the um, script and then you do that up and everything, get the people to, um, audition with you and then you submit it and you never hear anything back so that was yeah. three, you know that's three days of work you get no return on that but you just got to keep um, turning it out and like keep doing it and then you'll get one really awesome gig and the pay rate for that one day is really awesome you know it pays for the last like if you put it on a minimum wage type thing it'll mm -hmm. pay for the last three auditions you put effort into you know yeah so it's just, yeah, I think the whole instant gratification and people viewing it as a, what is my rate of return for my time investment? Mm -hmm. I think where people get at it. But then you have those um, starving artists and stuff and they just don't want to starve anymore, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so yeah. I, I, but it's like, I think a lot of people don't understand that it's okay to have like a side hustle or a side job from your passion. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, until you, like, everybody talks about how they used to be a waiter or something like that. The very few people, like, Timothy Chalamet, they had their parents fund everything, you know? And it's like, well, good for you. You were in a very fortunate to grow up with that. But a lot of people don't realize that people like him and Taylor Swift and all these other people who just suddenly made it and they never had to work a side job, they had their parents fund everything. And it's like, if you didn't grow up like that, there's nothing wrong with you. It doesn't mean you're not going to be successful. Sure. It's right now, you got to grind a little bit harder. And I know a handful of those people who've had their parents fund their career, or at least their base career, they're not even doing it anymore because they didn't have to work for it. Very few people that do have their parents fund everything are in it for the long haul. It's like, obviously you have exceptions, but it's like people who have to work for it. Yeah, it is true. Yeah. It's yeah, like, it is true. I, I've seen it also too. Mm, that happening. Yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah. I mean, that's just that's just my opinion on what would make somebody drop out. Two slow results, I guess. Mm. Microwave world, <laughs> and then, um, yeah. I think I think that's it basically. Uh, but some people they do just get tired of the whole thing it's like they start off with passion and they just lose it you know and that, like i've seen that happen too like they're in it they love it but they also have a like they're also attention span thing it's like people who they'll keep a job for um two to three years and they're really good they excel and all of a sudden like, i don't want to do it anymore and so they go over there that's just the personality type so yeah. That's yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, it's so interesting that, but yeah, it's true. Yeah, I do think that whenever either starting a, yeah, starting a business, starting a project or starting a new job or whatever, that the fact that, as you just mentioned, that uh, that sometimes we want everything to go, like, you know, like to be there, like, I mean, we are just starting walking and then we want like super sprinting, but whenever that happens, it, it I mean, if you try that, at some point it's gonna crash. You yeah. know, like it's gonna crash that eventually, and 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 I just think also that we are living in this world in which, whenever we see like this YouTuber or um, movie star, rock star, whatever, like to suddenly reaching out and to be like more famous and everything, and then everybody will start to say like that guy, that that guy came out of nowhere, you know, like like this talent, where this came from, and then, and then when you know about that person, it's like no, I mean that person spend hours and hours and hours and hours of working to go uh, doing this a uh, practice there like a lot of things there in order to reach the point we is and i think also that that for some people they want to do like they want the fame and, and the glory and all of that awesome stuff but the hard work they just don't want to do it you know because either it's too hard or maybe it's not or maybe it's not it's not it's not for them but that's fine because i do think also that we live in this world in which if you fail, 
instantly you're a loser, you know, in which it's not the case. I mean, if you fail, it's just part of the whole learning learning curve. I mean, if you fail, that's fine. I mean, you will have to, you will learn. From the, I mean, it's, it's up to you, of course, if you learn from those mistakes in order to become a better a better version of yourself from that first one, because if you continue doing it, I mean, you know, but... Uh, it's called failing upwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the that's the way. I mean, I I, I, I get I get like so so this yeah like so depressed sometimes like like with some friends of mine that that they just want to quit their dreams, you know that they want to quit what they're doing because uh, those are my dogs by the way, you know. Um, yeah, they want to quit what they do because they don't have like like the reach they want, you know. They are not having like this fame, and they start to compare with this huge, I mean, with these people that they have it, that they have a career and then you're like, well, yeah, I mean, this guy's been doing this for seven, eight years and you're just starting. I mean, of course, that person has like a better, you know, has like a more, uh, yeah, it's, 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 that, that person learned, has more learning uh, experience than you. I mean, that's, that's, that's obvious. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. and person is the thief of all joy and it's like once you start looking at somebody else's life it's like well why didn't that work out for me but it's like uh, just like with rel like how to relate to people and make your character relatable it's like everything's subjective every single thing is subjective it's like yeah. you know it's like everybody's given different opportunities nobody is um equal in their starting ground in on the world it, yeah so it's like and that's a good thing because we don't have we would have like no diversity and variety if everybody started off on the same foot so i mean yeah and it really makes you see what you're made of and everything like how far you can go like you're mm. a lot stronger than those who started off on the soft footing um type thing like you can mm. handle which is interesting creates uh, more care it's more character building let's put it that way you know, people talk about stats and it's like, well, they had everything to them is the people who work for the things, they really value and appreciate it a lot more. You know, they don't um, take things for granted. There you go. But, but you just saying, I think a big thing that a lot of people do need to do instead of like feeling like, oh, I have to grind for it is saying I am putting in good effort because um, I've like I've I've been I've experienced burnout you know it's kind of like after that it's like I need to actually breathe and like um look at things in like the huge grand perspective of like there is enough to go around what's meant for me will not pass me by as long as I am open to success and opportunity you know as long as yes to things like if you get an audition for something like from an acting point of view but it's like if um like i got an audition for something i wasn't yeah. like excited about but um i did it anyway because it's like well you know what if i say no to this that's me turning away on opportunity and you know you keep praying and desiring and manifesting opportunities and stuff and here you are and when you tell it no you're shutting that door you know but it's like you do it anyway and then by the time you're done with your audition you're like yeah that felt really good i'm really excited about that you know um uh even no matter what it is so yeah that's uh something that i think is important changing our mindset to being like there's enough to go around it's like i as long as you're pursuing your dreams and you're like being content where you are but still striving to be your best person and striving for betterment and everything that you do i think you can't really go wrong there and then you sometimes I've seen a lot of people they start out pursuing like uh, my friend Miosha. Um, <laughs> she's uh, she started off pursuing acting, and I just found this out because I didn't meet her like that. I met her as a director producer, mm -hmm. and um, she started out pursuing acting, and then she was kind of like, "This isn't what I want to do." She's mm -hmm. like behind the camera and do all this, and now she's been featured in several different things, and she's. Um, working on some things that I'm not allowed to talk about, but she let me know because I'm her friend. Maybe I shouldn't be widespreading that, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, it's like things like that. You'll find like you like she works real hard, and she was always down for opportunity, and she realized she really found passion in something else. I mean, and that was kind of like for me too. My passion when I was younger was singing, 
mm-hmm. and I was in a musical and I preferred the acting aspect of it to mm-hmm. singing so it's like you know you're constantly I think saying I am this and this is all that I am this is all that I'm going to pursue is very limiting and mm-hmm. yeah exactly you're putting yourself in a box I mean even Nat McConaughey talked about diversifying himself and that's like a huge thing we can't by just saying this is what I am and this is what I do you're mm-hmm. like you know you're shutting your off from so many things like um acting is my passion and my career of choice but it's like if i am just focused on that then i'm a way less rounded person and my performances don't come across as genuine because i like they wouldn't come across as genuine because i would not have as much life experience to draw on and that was something when i went to um my first acting classes they said you need more life experience in order to play these types of roles yeah. in a um, genuine way and i was like what are you talking about i don't need to be doing this and that and it's like i'm i know how to act and it's like yeah you're good for these roles that have a similar life experience to you but you cannot play these things well let's put it that way without having yeah. more- after going through some really um like the I fall difference and ever since then um it's like it it un, I never wish it upon anybody but like going through something very difficult really mm. it comes with your life experience yeah um it improves your what you can draw back on but I do not encourage people to go seek hard times it's like <laughs> you know, know. Mm. I have a friend yeah. that's I'd experienced something like that and I was like no you don't mm-hmm. like, let me tell you my experience and maybe you can use that um <laughs> it's like don't try to seek out <laughs> difficult things um but <clears throat> yeah I'm like and I'm a pretty empathetic person so if somebody tells me something I'm like oh I'm so sad for you you know um so it's a lot of people are and I feel like you don't need to seek out negative instances but every life experience that you get along the way helps further um like deep in your performances if that makes sense I feel like it's your- yeah <laughs> wow yeah and my last question here what advice could you give to those who are unsure you know if they should start not because i think we all get that that question right that whenever we are going to start something something new you know that we're going to kind of step out of our comfort zone start to start to start like this new challenge we start to think ourselves um should we should we do it shouldn't we do it and then you will ask some family and friends and maybe those one they will give you like the worst advices or maybe a good one but most of them they, they will tell you no so what would you say to those who aren't sure i think tr- I, i i'm not a big fan of posting um auditions and practice on social media i know some people would say post on social media and see what reception you get and i'm like yeah. no Um that that's just me because it's like you don't want to I don't know that's just me yeah. but I think figuring out finding looking up monologues taping yourself um getting on backstage backstage is $10 a month and there's usually local listings if you're in a smaller town backstage and actors access they have postings all the time yeah. they backstage is $10 a month you can upload whatever heck you want submit for whatever the heck you want they just don't always have a ton of stuff to audition for depending on what city you're in most of it's selling sure. work um but for um like actors access it is a little bit more expensive but you could just do $2 for every submission if you just want to do that just to put yourself out there um yeah. to what's up and i mean one thing this is something that i've been told boosts your likelihood of getting seen on actors access mm. and then but if you're just starting out <laughs> have have a friend that has a good camera if you want to shell out the money for headshots don't spend more than like what 200 for your first round unless you unless you're deciding to full on commit to it yeah. just starting out and it's like everybody yeah so um 
Yeah, and then on Actors Access, if you upload a slate shot, which is just you saying, hi, my name is Taylor Lyons, and I'm based in Los Angeles, and I'm five foot two, and stuff like that, you know, just like saying, hello, where you're based, and your height um, for your slate shot, that'll increase your likelihood of being seen by the casting directors, because I, because Actors Access has an algorithm that they um, show submissions to the casting directors through, but that's what I say, try it out. And then if you can find an agent in the area that might be interested, they might call you in or talk to you on the phone just to see if, um, if you pass it. Look for, but if I were you, I would contact the area saying, hey, I'm interested in representation. If you hit right now, um, I would really appreciate it. Or because a lot of actor agents don't respond to those submission emails, especially if they're, they say they're close for yeah. But a lot of them will have resource pages that could have where you can um, find an acting course in that local area. And so, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, at the end of the day, just do it. I mean, yeah. as I uh, as I was saying to a friend of mine the other day, I mean. You already have the worst case scenario, which you are not doing anything, so it doesn't matter if you try it out, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I mean, Taylor, what can I say? I mean, we already know that you are super awesome, talented, and I'm super sure that eventually we'll see you crushing it in these huge franchises. I'm super sure we'll see you in sci-fi movies and everything. And, and, and even at some point, we're going to see you everywhere. And I'm, and, and I'm super sure of that. Keep doing what you do because it is super inspiring. I mean, the fact that you are continuing pursuing your acting career and that you are uh, having like a yeah having the chance to go to take to take like another project here and there that is super cool. And I think that is also that is also kind of the proof that dreams come true, but you need to also uh, work on them. You know, you need to put like a lot of a lot of effort to it. So the fact that you're doing it, that's awesome. Keep doing what you do. Also. <clears throat> Make sure that you're following Taylor in all of social media. Normally, what I would say is, if you're watching this later on YouTube or listening to this later on the podcast, uh, if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel, it's super quick. It helps a lot. And then hydrate, and then go follow Taylor. Leave a million likes. Spread the word. Share share the work. I mean, let's let the. I mean, let's make sure that that the whole world know who Taylor is, and then we'll come back. And again, Taylor, thank you so so much. Before I send you off. You know the drill. I have to I have to send you off. Oh wait. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And I'll see you in the next one. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>